Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to part two of this awesome, fantastic, transcendental Maximus P circular sequencer JavaScript Java strip, JavaScript extravaganza. Um, so last time we left off, I showed you how to make a beautiful little circle of toggles like this just by using JavaScript. And since we're really cool, um, instead of only creating 13, uh, we can create any number of toggles that we want. We could create, say, four toggles, or 16 toggles, or 12. You may have noticed here that something has gone horribly wrong, and we're now making many, many more toggles than we meant to, because we're not cleaning up the old toggles before we make the new ones. Um, so to fix that, let's jump back to our JavaScript. Um, so one thing that we could do is we could make an array of every toggle that we create, and then be sure to clean up those toggles um, when we make new ones. I vote for a different and much slicker idea, which is, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but if you select an object in Max and you open up the inspector, there's this little option down here called scripting name. And what that actually is, is a name you can give that object that you can then call from JavaScript uh, to get a reference to that object only by knowing its name, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, so what I'm going to suggest we do is every time we make a toggle, we name it. And that way we can get access to it later so we can delete it. Um, so we do var new toggle equals this patcher new object toggle blah 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 and then we go new toggle dot var name equals um, toggle plus i so that's great the name of the toggle is just going to be toggle plus the index of that toggle and if we go ahead and make sure that circseek has this up to date code and compile it now when we make 12 toggles the top toggle you'll see is name toggle zero see scripting name scripting See, scripting name, toggle zero, which is just fantastic, isn't it? Um, what that means we can do now is if we go back to the JavaScript code, we can then delete all the old toggles just by calling them out by name. So before we create the toggles, um, delete old toggles. For var i equals zero, i less than um, max togs, is that what it's called? Max tog. I plus plus um, var old toggle equals this dot patcher dot and the function here is called get named toggle plus I. Now you may notice that um, this deletes all the toggles from 0 to 16 even if we don't have 16 toggles um, but fortunately if we try to delete an object that's not there nothing happens and that's fine. This dot patcher dot remove old toggle and now we should actually clean up after ourselves when we make the new toggles. Let's just make sure. Eight. Yes, look at that. How cool is that? This is the part where I actually got really excited about JavaScript and Max, because like this is pretty cool what's happening right here. Um, for me anyway. So anyway, jumping back to our JavaScript. Now what we want to do is have an array that maintains the state of each of these toggles. That way when our metronome tells the, the JavaScript object which beat we're on, um, it'll know whether or not to actually play a sound. So I'm going to make an, uh, add another variable up here, uh, call it the toggle state array. So var toggle states equals new array. And then we're going to initialize that array to set all the values equal to zero, because all the uh, toggles will be off by, um, by default. So for var i equals zero, i less than tog max, sorry, max tog, I plus plus toggle states of i equals zero. I can't remember whether that actually they're zero by default, but whatever, I don't care. So that initializes our toggle state array. Now what we want, we need a way to get each of these toggles to be able to give its own message to the JavaScript object, and we want to actually hook them up. And the way that I suggest we do that is by using the funnel object. Uh, the max funnel object, in case you don't know, takes a number of arguments, that is the number of inlets it will have, and whenever it gets a message in a specific inlet, it prepends the, um, to the output uh, the index of that inlet. So if we connect this toggle up to inlet 3 here, um, and then watch the output of funnel when the toggle toggles, um, you'll see the output here 2, 1, and that's because uh, inlets index from 0, so this is inlet 0, this is inlet 1, this is inlet 2, and I got the message 1. So consequently 2, 1 came out of funnel. So what we want to do now is programmatically make a funnel, hook each of the toggles up to that funnel, and hook the funnel up to our JavaScript object. Um, so let's make a variable up here to store our uh, 
store our funnel, var my funnel equals zero, because initially there's nothing in there. And now, first, uh, after we delete our toggles, we should delete the old funnel if there is one. Delete old funnel. Var, ah, sorry, if my funnel and my funnel valid, this dot patcher dot remove my funnel. And now we make a new up to date funnel. Um, this dot patcher, sorry, my funnel equals this dot patcher dot new default. The X position, new default takes the arguments X position, Y position, name of the object, and then any arguments that object has. Um, so in this case, the X position I think should just be a little bit further to the right than the um, circle. So we'll just do toggle inset plus three times toggle radius. Um, or I guess it makes more sense to do two times toggle radius plus 100. Um, toggle inset for the Y. The name of the object is funnel, and the argument it takes is the number of toggles. Cool. Um, so that should actually do all that. If you come back here, update this with fresh code, compile, make sure there are no mistakes, there are none. Um, everything should work. Sweet. See, look, we're making a new funnel every time that has the right number of inlets. Okay. After we make the funnel, we need to hook it up to our JavaScript object. To do that, we call this dot patcher dot hidden connect. Um, hidden connect takes as arguments uh, the inlet or outlet you want to use, the name of the object, um, and then the outlet, the inlet, the sorry, the index of the outlet, the object that you want to outlet from, the index of the inlet, and the object you want to inlet to. In this case, we're connecting to this um, JavaScript object, so we do this dot box. Um, now let's make sure this is fresh code, compile, no errors, make sure this works. It does not work. Why? Why? No, Max, don't pretend like everything's working when you can see perfectly well that it isn't. Um, is it not called hidden connect? I think it is. Hold on one second, I'm going to look up the answer. Okay, found the problem. Uh, turns out it doesn't go the outlet and then the object, it goes the object then the outlet. Um, so this is my funnel, connect the first outlet to this object, its first inlet. Um, make sure that works. And lo and behold, the, fun the funnel is connected to our object. That is just fantastic. Um, cool. So, uh, the other thing we have to do is when we create all the toggles, we have to connect them to the funnel object. Um, so after we create the, the toggle, we connect to funnel. So new uh, this dot patcher dot hidden connect um, the new toggle first outlet to my funnel uh, inlet I. Let's make sure that works. A lot of make sure that works, but you know what? You get in a lot of trouble if you don't make sure it works. Uh, eight. And look at that. Each toggle automatically connected to the funnel, and the funnel automatically connected to our JavaScript object. Okay. Now we want the JavaScript. Man, how much time do we have? Oh, God. All right, so now we want the JavaScript object to update the state of its um, toggle states array whenever it gets a message from uh, one of these toggles. It's going to be of the form which toggle I am and my value. So we make a new function, um, list. This is a special um, arg a special function name in Max JavaScript objects. This is what, we'll, what the object will do when it gets a list. And what we want it to do is make the index into um, the toggle array b arguments zero. That's how you get the first member of the list. And value, we're going to set equal to arguments one. That will be whether the toggle is one or zero. And then we do uh, toggle states of index equal to value. 
Sweet, that should do that. Um, no real way to test that. I guess we'll just assume that that works. <laughs> that didn't sound like a very good idea, but whatever. Anyway, so we delete all this. Cool, and it still seems to be working. Everyone seems to be happy. Okay, so unfortunately we didn't get to make any sound here in part two. Uh, I promise we'll get to it in part three. Um, stick around, it's gonna be awesome.